The Green Bay Packers have what every team wants or is looking for. What am I talking about before I jump into it? If you like the content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. Okay, so this week we have been covering free agents for the Packers this upcoming 2024 season. Who should they keep? Who should they restructure? Who should they just say goodbye to? And then also just scratching the surface on the draft positionally. Who should the Packers be looking at positionally in the draft? We've already covered running backs and quarterbacks. Today, we're going to be taking a look at wide receivers and tight ends. So what do I mean by the Packers have what every team wants or is looking for? That is the fact that they don't need to look to the 2024 draft to for to help them out on the wide receiving front. They have already got their wide receiving room set. They really do not need anybody, not even free agents, really. Well, when you start talking Who's on that team? You got Christian Watson under contract, who obviously they've the Packers have already discussed that they're making him a priority as far as like trying to figure out what is going on with this guy's hamstrings. He's already invested a lot of money. Um, they fired their trainer, uh, obviously looking to get uh, keep some guys out on the field a, a lot longer than what we experienced this past season. But Christian Watson, obviously is such a valuable player when he is out on the football field because he, uh, with his speed and what he can bring when he is healthy out of the football field, um, is one of the better ones in the game. When you start talking about his age, he's only a sophomore. This upcoming year is going to be a junior. You got Romeo Dobbs, who, who in that Dallas Cowboys game and uh, in just overall in the playoffs first the versus the Niners, he was such a big target for Jordan Love, creating a ton of separation. Um, Romeo Dobbs, uh, who I think has great hands on this team. Uh, you got him, you got Samori Torre. Samori Torre is that one guy that I feel that the Packers could part ways from. Um, he's he's You can find him in the fifth, sixth round to me. Uh, they save about a million dollars in cap space. If they do let him go, you got Jaden Reed, one of the most impressive rookies, uh, in this wide receiving cast this past season. I really love that dude. Dontavian Wicks, one of the favorite targets for Jordan love. And then you've got Bo Melton who they obviously got from Seattle. And then he was on their practice squad before they elevated him due to win injuries, uh, from Christian Watson, but Bo Melton over a three game span looked absolutely impressive. I feel like Bo Melton has so much more to offer with his speed. They can use him in, in so many different facets of the game. And then he got Malik Keith. I really love that dude too. They elevated Grant DeBose and Pitts uh, from the 53 and roster. So they are under contract currently. When we start talking free agents, there are none for the Packers. Okay. So like we had talked about, let me know in the comments, what you think should the Packers, you know, could they could they cut ties with Samori Torre, save a million dollars, and then go and draft somebody later on in with with their eleven draft picks? Could they go and and do something like that? I think absolutely they could do that. So when we start talking, um, Dontavian Wicks, Dontavian Wicks, what an impressive year this guy had! Obviously proving that he is a reliable target for Jordan Love. Drafted him in the fifth round, Dontavian Wicks. No player in the NFL has a higher percentage of routes versus man coverage that created separation than Dontavian Wicks did. So I'm super excited to see what is on or in the near future for Dontavian Wicks there in Green Bay. He almost he shows signs of looking like Devontae Adams, um, uh, you know, with some of those stats. And when we start talking about just creating that separation, but Let's get to tight ends. Okay, so let's move on to tight ends. Under contract for the Packers, you've got Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft, Ben Sims, Henry Pearson, and Joel Wilson. When we start talking tight ends and rookies this past season, other than Sammy Laporta in Detroit, there are pretty much no other tight ends that I would rather have in the NFL um, as far as rookies go when you start talking Luke Musgrave and the upside that that guy has with his breakaway speed. And then Tucker Craft again, showing himself to be a reliable target when Musgrave was out. Um, Tucker Craft stepped up in a big way. He is a little bit better than Musgrave is, is when we start talking blocking tight end, pass blocking, all of that stuff. But that is one thing that the Packers could do and could use is a pass blocking tight end. 
Um, free agents are Josiah DeGuar. Uh, he's unrestricted. And then Tyler Davis, they don't bring back Josiah DeGuar. He's just, he's gone. There's no way that the Packers are bringing back Josiah DeGuar, especially when you got a guy like Tyler Davis, who seems to be um, regarded as a, a favorite player in Green Bay. He certainly um, is. Uh, and then he, they could return him on the cheap after he missed this last season with a knee injury. I see them. They could get um, potentially get uh, Tyler Davis back on the cheaps, but maybe in the draft, they go and get a Mercedes Lewis type guy. That's somebody that can then that could uh, pass block, especially when we're talking red zone, somebody that could, you know, really provide some run blocking uh, for the Packers. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Who do you think the Packers should look to in the draft? If, if it's wide receiver or tight end, they really don't need any wideouts. But again, my thought, my thought is you part ways with, with Samori Torre and you go and get a Samori Torre type player later on in the draft. But should they look for a pass blocking tight end, somebody to help out on that front when we're talking the red zone, leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Go Pack Go.